Church of Washington Hills, the Sunday School lesson for Sunday, May the 28th, 2023. We are in the spring quarter, titled Jesus Pleases His Father in Unit 3 by His Teachings. And our lesson for today is Jesus Prays for Believers, which is coming from John, the 17th chapter, the 6th through the 21st verse. And I will go to text read, I pray that thou all may be one, as thy Father art in me, and I in thee, and that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. John 17 and the 21st verse. Let us pray. O gracious and dear Heavenly Father, here's once again we call on your most holy and your righteous name. We call upon you with thanksgiving in our heart, realizing that we have so much to be thankful for. We thank you for our early rising this morning. We thank you for starting us on another day's journey. Oh, Heavenly Master, we thank you for all that you have provided for us. We start right now just to give you all the honor and give you all the glory for you is worthy. Oh, Heavenly Master, we just call upon you, just thanking you for being so good to us. Now, Heavenly Master, we pray for the sick all over the land. We pray for families who have lost a loved one and their heads are bowed down in sorrow. We pray for souls that are lost in the world of sin. Touch them before it ever lasts too late. Now, Heavenly Master, we ask that you open our hearts and our minds that we might be receptive to your holy word, Father. We ask these blessings and all blessings in the daughter's name of Jesus. Amen. Our devotion reading is coming from the book of John, the 17th chapter, the 22nd through the 24th verses. Beginning with the 22nd verse. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they might be one, even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me. And has loved them as thou has loved me. In the last verse, number 24. Father, I will that they also, whom thou have given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou have given me. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Amen. Our lesson today is Jesus prays for believers. And our lesson outline, number one, is prayer for God's glory, which is coming from John 17, the 6th through the 8th verse. And then the second outline is prayer for the disciples, John 17, 9 through the 19th verse. And then the third outline is prayer for future believers, John 17, 20 through the 21st verses. This lesson ends our study in Unit 3 titled, By His Teachings. And also the screen quarter title, Jesus Pleases His Father. The gospel tells us several times that Jesus often went off alone to pray at night. Whereas we can also find numerous short prayers he prayed. However, John 17 is the only instant where we actually get to see Jesus' word in an extended prayer. It is a prayer that reveals the heart of Christ for the band of disciples he chose and trained to carry on the mission of God in the world after his departure. We can get a glimpse into what he continually prayed in heaven as our great high priest and advocate before the Father. We get great comfort and encouragement to know that Jesus, our great King and Lord, is actively praying for us out of his heart of love and compassion. Jesus' word instructs believers to pray at all times for one another, whereas Christians can please the Father by praying for others just as Jesus did. Our first outline is prayer for God's glory, which is the 6th through the 8th verse. Number 6, 
I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thou, thine they was, and thou gavest them, them me, and they have kept thy word. After speaking these things, Jesus looked toward heaven and prayed to the Father. The hour had come for the Lord death, whereas he asked the Father would glorify the Son by his death on the cross, resurrection, and ascension into heaven, so that the Son could glorify the Father by leading men to salvation. As a result of his work of redemption, God gave his Son authority over all mankind, which entitled him to give eternal life to those whom the Father had given him. After Jesus prayed for himself, he now prays for the disciples. Jesus had manifested the Father's name to the disciples whom the Father had given him out of the world. Christ has fully declared the Father's true nature, which referred to the person, his attributes, and character. Many times, Jesus corrected even rebuking his disciples. However, he indicated here that they have kept God's word. The disciples were fallible, but that trusting commitment to Jesus meant that they were sincerely, truly following God. They placed their faith in him as the Christ, which was evident through their continual obedience to God's word. In number seven, now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. The disciple knew that God had given to Jesus everything he had. Jesus did or said nothing on his own initiative, but did and said all in complete dependence upon his, his God and Father. The disciple knew the words of truth which Christ gave them was from the Father. Then that last verse is outline number eight. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. When we read Jesus' teachings, we are learning God's very word. The disciple obviously did not understand everything about Jesus and his work. But at this point, they was convinced of the divine order of Jesus and his teachings. As a result of receiving the word of truth, the disciple was convinced that Christ had been sent from the Father. The disciple had sincere, legitimate faith in him and his message. Whereas perfection is not required, but only humble, submission, faith. The Savior had perfectly represented his father, explaining to the disciple he that he did not just speak or act by his own authority, but only has the Father instructed him. Whereas they believed that the Father had sent the Son. Jesus came in obedience to the Father's will, and he was the perfect servant of Jehovah. And this in our first outline prayer. For God's glory. And our second outline is prayer for the disciple, which is the ninth through the 19 verses. Number nine, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou have given me, for they are thine. Jesus' concern for his disciple prompted him to pray for them. Even though they was given to him, but they still belong to the Father. Jesus is most directly praying for the apostle. But however, later on in verse 20, his prayer does have application to all who come to faith in Christ. However, the one group for whom these prayer is absolutely not applicable is unbelievers. Those who do not believe in the Son of God. Jesus did care for a lost and fallen world, but here was the focus of on his own disciples. The salvation of the world depends on the witness of those whom the Father had given him out of the world, and it was them who needed his intersection at this junction. 
Number 10, and all minds are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. The perfect union between the Father and the Son is shown here. Jesus said that all minds are thine, and thine are mine. Whereas no man could truthfully say these words, because the Son is equal with the Father, that he could say it. Say it. Jesus speaks of a shared role in the life of the redeemed. Whereas believers belong to both God the Father and God the Son, who provide for that spiritual welfare. Jesus is glorified through the believer. In number 11, And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thy own name those whom thou have given me, that they may be one as we are. Realizing that his death, resurrection, and ultimate Return to the Father will soon happen. Whereas Jesus would no longer be in the world, Jesus prayed for his disciples. Jesus was concerned for the spiritual well-being of the disciples, for they would remain in the world. Jesus turned the disciple over to the Holy Father for safekeeping. Holy speak of one who is intimately high, and Father speak of one who is intimately nigh. Jesus had kept his group together, whereas they was the one he was concerned about upon his death. Jesus prayed that the Father would keep the disciple through his name, whereas they be united as one, just as he and the Father are one. As the Father and Son are one in moral likeness, so believers should be united in this respect, that they are like the Lord Jesus. In number 12, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name that thou gavest me. I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. When Jesus was with his disciples, he safely guarded them in the power of the Father's name. Out of all of those that the Father gave him, not one of them was lost or eternal spiritual ruin except Judas, the son of prediction, the one destined to evil and destruction. The one exception to Jesus working, keeping the disciples was in fulfillment of the scripture. Those who act in opposition to God's salvation brings eternal doom upon themselves. In number 13, and now come I to thee, and these things I speak into the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Jesus had spoken the truth to his disciples while he was with them. He found joy in his obedience to the Father's will. He desired that the disciples would follow his example of obedience and experience the same joy he did. Since Jesus was leaving the disciples, he asked that they might be filled with his joy. Jesus was so concerned for joy among his disciples that he prayed for it. Where he is also concerned that we too have joy. The world, the flesh, and the devil would tell us something different. But God wants joy fulfilled in our lives. Then number 14, I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. The Lord gave God's word to the disciples, and they received it. The world is intolerant of the truth because it is contrary to his views and values. As a result, the world turned on them and hated them. They had the characteristic of the Lord Jesus, therefore the world despised them. They did not fit in with the world scheme of things, whereas as Christ is not of this world, the disciple was also not of the world. A cornerstone of Christian faith is following the example of Jesus Christ, and the more Christ-like a person is, the more an anti-Christian world will hate and prosecute them. 
And number 15, I pray not that thou should take them out of the world, but that thou should keep them from the evil. Jesus was not praying that the Father would remove the disciple from the world, but that God would keep them from the evil one, the devil. Satan is behind much of the corrupting influences of the world. They live in an antagonistic and perilous world. However, the disciple had a mission to fulfill. <clears throat> they must be left here to grow in grace and to witness for Christ. Our goal is to be in the world, but not of the world or of the evil one. In number 16, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. <clears throat> Christians are not promised to be taken away from persecution and hardship, but that God will be with us in those trials. As part of this, believers are expected to be in the world, but not all the world. Because Jesus could see his disciples as in him, he could see them as not of the world, even as Jesus was not of the world. His disciples for them to be what they really was in him. Believers can be what God desired them while living in the world. <clears throat> then number 17, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Jesus prayed that the Father would sanctify, meaning set apart the disciple by the truth. The dynamic behind sanctification is truth. The word of God read, heard, understood, and applied. What God tells us through the person, the teaching, and the message of Christ is that which is real. It is actual truth in the deepest and most fundamental sense. God is true, and salvation comes when we accept the reality of who he is and who we are. He desired that our thoughts, words, and actions be in complete conformity to God's truth. Jesus was sending his disciples on a mission, and they needed to have a holy character and lifestyle that would draw people to the Savior. Then number 18, as thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. The Father sent the Lord Jesus into the world to reveal the character of God to mankind. Jesus sent them into the world to accomplish his will, just as the Father had sent him. Christ has sent us into a hostile world to be his witnesses. Believers are here to represent God to the world, which is the reason Jesus sent them into the world. Their witness would be no greater than thy, their living by the word. And then the last verse in this outline, number 19. And for thy sake, I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified through the truth. Jesus sanctified himself in order that his disciples might be sanctified. The Lord set him, himself apart from the work his father sent him to do, which was his sacrificial death. An integrity part of the gospel is that the Messiah will suffer and die for the sins of mankind. This is a role only Jesus can fulfill. The truth of God can be spoken by others, and even some of the work Jesus did can be repeated by others, but only the sinless Son of Man can become the means by which mankind is saved. It was through that finished work that the Word of God and the work of God will become fully affected in the life of the disciples. His sanctification is the pattern law and the power for ours, whereas we should be set apart from the world and find our portion with him. And this is our second outline, prayer for the disciple. And our last outline is prayer for the believers, which is the 20 and the 21st verses. Number 20, need to pray out for these alone but for them also we shall believe on me through their word. Jesus now extends his prayer beyond the disciple, 
Whereas he prayed for those of us who are his followers today, that the Father will protect us from the devil. He prayed for generations not yet born, those who will be saved through the witness and ministry of the disciples. The word is the overall message of God, which includes the person and ministry of Jesus Christ, his teaching, and the written messages the apostles will record. The scripture are our sword that the Holy Spirit will use to fight off the temptation that Satan brings to us. Just as God the Son was sent into the world to proclaim a message from God the Father, we too are Christian believers sent into the world to proclaim a message given to us by Christ. We have a responsibility to the current and future generation that requires holiness. Earlier in his prayer, Jesus prayed that the disciples remain unified, whereas he broadened the sense of the prayer to all believers that they all may be one. And this brings us down to our last verse, number 21. That they all may be one. And thy father are in me, and I in thee. That they also may be in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Jesus prayed that they may be one with a unity like that between him and the Father. The oneness Jesus had in mind was the unity that comes from the shared life in both God the Father and God the Son. He wished that they would be one so that the world would believe what they preach. Jesus essentially gave the world permission to judge the validity of his ministry based on the unity of his people. Unity among God's people helps the world to believe that the Father sent the Son, which is why those who say they are Christian must behave accordingly and held accountable by other Christians. While Jesus was on earth, he did not seek to live for himself, but he sought to please the Father in all things, where he was focused on the mission the Father had sent him to complete. Jesus sought the will of God to build his kingdom, whereas believers are to follow Christ's example. Believers should seek to be unified in truth, love, and purpose to glorify Christ, whereas those who love God will obey God. And the primary demonstration of that is a unifying love for others' believers. This unity makes the world say, I see Christ in those Christians as the Father was seen in the Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And this ends our lesson for today. And on next Sunday, uh, June the 4th, our lesson will be Upside Down Kingdom, which is coming from Matthew, the 5th chapter, the 1st through the 16th verses. And the devotional reading is coming from Psalm. 24th chapter 1 through the 6th verse. Our virtual telecast Sunday school lesson is on at 8 o'clock a.m. on the First Baptist Church of Washington Hill Facebook and YouTube page. Our sanctuary Sunday school starts at 9.30 a.m. Our sanctuary Sunday morning worship starts at 10.30 a.m. It broadcasts live on Facebook on the First Baptist Church of Washington Hill Facebook page. Our Wednesday night Bible study is live on Facebook at 6 o'clock p.m. on the First Baptist Church of Washington Hill Facebook page. Both broadcasts are available later on YouTube on the First Baptist Church of Washington Hill channel. We just want to pause in memory of our heroes. Thank you for your sacrifice. Have a happy and safe Memorial Day. Let us pray. Oh, gracious and dear Heavenly Father, Here's once again, we call on your holy and your righteous name. We call upon you with thanksgiving in our hearts, for we know that we have so much to be thankful for. We thank you for life as well with us as it is. We thank you for blessing us with a portion of our health and strength. We thank you for enclosing us in our right mind. Well, Heavenly Master, we can't do nothing but say thank you, Father, for you've been so good to us. 
You woke us up right early this morning and allowed us to see a brand new day. Oh, Heavenly Master, we thank you for starting us on another day's journey. Oh, Heavenly Master, we ask you to continue to lead and to guide us in the way to be pleasing in your sight. For we realize we're on the teaser journey. And we realize that we cannot make it by ourselves. We need you, Father, each and every day. We need you every step of the way. Oh, Heavenly Master, we just call upon your holy name, Father. Thanking you for bringing us from a mighty long way. You have opened so many doors for us and you have made ways out of no way. You kept us from danger seen and danger unseen. And we just thank you, Father, for all what you have done for us. Now, Father, we just stop just give you all the honor, give you all the glory, and give you the praise. For you is worthy. We magnify your name, for your name is above all other names, Father. We thank you, Father, for being so good to us. We thank you for being a loving God, one that cares about us and provides for us everything that we need. And Father, we just start once again just to say thank you and give you all the glory. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. We want to thank you once again for tuning in to our Sunday school lesson. And we want to bid you to have a good rest of the day and to have a safe Memorial Day celebration. And until we meet again on next Sunday, we bid you to have a good rest of the week. And may the Lord continue to bless you and to keep you in his love and care. Amen.